If you were a card in a deck, which one are you? You're given opportunities. It's just whether or not you can recognize that that opportunity is there. Resistance is futile. It's futile, yeah. Change is inevitable. So again, I said we were having a little chit chat earlier on as to what subject will we have a little talk about, and we were we arrived at a consensus of numbers might be a trigger, uh, and I and I was actually we last year we started a series of six paintings, and the first painting was I am not a number, and that was we started our whole conversation around this journey in our own life in the sense of, we, well, I felt I was a number. I was an employee number for 30 years. And I was just going, there was no me in the whole journey. But as soon as I left one job and went to the other, that employee number changed and they for, the system forgot who don't, I was don't forget, Garvin, in that job. I was don't forget, Garvin, next. you'd actually reached a certain number that was significant. You were you, you reached the, oh my fifty two is yeah, it that's right that became the, the and then no, that became the fifty two jokers in the pack so you you suddenly equated yes. the fifty two of your age to the to the pack and that how you wanted to break free we, from we that. just used exactly we were asking people if you if you thought of the number fifty two what comes to mind and I just, you know, immediately I said fifty two weeks in a year you know fifty two cards in a deck. And then the deck started to sort of resonate with us in the sense of, you know, you know well, a deck of cards. And what's in there is four different suits. And, and you're going, four different suits. Suit reminded me of, well, wearing a suit and work and this is, I had a suit in terms of what my role is in life in terms of career. And I hadn't changed suit in 20, 30 years. Well, I actually physically had changed suits. I went from Armani to Hugo Boss, perhaps, and then to Dunn Stores. But I mean, in terms of my job and my career, I was still wearing the same suit, but I could have been moving up the, the deck, the, the suit in the deck of, I was a two of diamonds, I was a three of diamonds, I was a five years in, a 10 years in. In. Had I become a queen? Had I, made, had I become a king yet? Was I the king or the ace of spades? Had I actually got to the top of my game in my suit? No, I was probably a three of clubs. I hadn't gone anywhere. I was in there. I wasn't motivated. I moved up little bits. I could have been a six or seven by the end of it. But I wasn't trying to be the queen, king or ace of my suit. I was just moving gradually up. But our conversation started off in terms of the suit of uh, what suit are you wearing? What number are you? And maybe I was a seven of diamonds and I was an accountant, but I didn't measure myself with that anymore. And I wanted to be something else. I wanted to be a joker. And that's where this conversation started now back in camp. The 52 jokers wild was 52 cards in a deck. What card are you? And we're hoping everybody's a joker. They can be any card they want. There's no rules to stay in your suit and stay at that number, you can change. And that's what the whole concept of 52 Jokers Wild was about. So I'll let you, I'll let you in there. Oh, actually, don't come in. I don't, don't come in, George. I was, I was nearly going to give him some airtime, but he, if he's not looking for it, I won't let him in. But he'd have to sort of beat his way in. And, and like, if we keep on going, what we, we, we start chatting to a friend of ours now, like Willie Watson, an artist, and we said, we want to get a brand wall. And we want to go on this journey, on this 36 foot of wall, and six, six foot paintings, and, and start off with a start. I am not a number. This statement on the beginning of our journey, we were a number before, we're no longer a number. Well, if we're not that number, what number are we? What number will we? What, 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 what suit do we want to wear? And if you were a card in a deck, which one are you? What, what card in the deck are you, George? <laughs> I'm not. I'm a jack. <laughs> well, I suppose they... Um, I think, I think... A jack of all trades. Well, that's, that's, that's the way it seems to be. The interesting thing, you were talking about suits, and, and in my profession, we we didn't have to wear suits. In fact, if you wore a suit, you you probably didn't get the jobs in the media side of things. Especially, It was the suits that gave you the job in the first place. It was a suit that got rid of you in the end. Yes, but, uh, but quite often in some of the, uh, especially the new media ones, it was the guy that wasn't in the suit wearing the jeans in the lift who actually fired and hired and fired the guys in the suits to do all his dirty work. So that was that was a slight change. So the other thing was that because of the background I came from, uh, I uh, we lived in the UK and my dad was a head gardener to a lot of lords and ladies and things like that. And so we were, we were part of the feudal system. And a lot of people don't realize that the feudal system still exists. How old 
old are you, George? I thought you were in your mid-50s. It sounds like you're 97. Now... Back in the feudal lord times. Yes, and- now, but, but the thing <laughs> is that, uh, you see, that's that's the misconception. Everybody thinks that the feudal system had actually finished. It's a Victorian-type thing, but it still exists. It carries on. And it's part of this kind of class system. So uh, most people sort of re- seem to know what their, their class actually is. Uh, and I suppose I, I'm a rebel. I don't sort of fit into that. I always... I remember as a four-year-old, talking about numbers again, sort of complaining because the, the, the toy that I'd been given was for a two-year-old. So I felt that it was I was above, you know, playing with two-year-old toys and wondered why the chauffeur had actually got quite a not chauffeur's children had actually got sort of more expensive toys that seemed to be appropriate for their their number, their age, and and made my voice now, known. Now there is a bunch of different suits there because you're talking about that's what the concept of suits is. Yeah. Is, we're one suit, you're the other. If we're, if we're the royalty and you're not, if you're the Jack Queen of Hearts, you're, you're upper class. If you're one to ten, yeah. you're, 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 you're aspiring. If you're two or three, you're never going to win a poker. Unless you've got a ro- like, you know, royal flush, if you think about it, you're definitely going to win. But if you're a couple of spades or a couple of twos, you're going, what chance have you in life with a pair of twos? Probably, and especially well, actually, in a game if you, of if you, poker, if you're, unless you are If you're, you're playing poker... I've actually seen certain situations where a king and a queen end up getting thrown out because the one and the two is better suited for the cards that are actually being laid on the table and the person would have won with the one or the two. Well, the two uh, or the three. No, there's an interesting one. Instead Do of the we actual... play the cards? Work? Yeah. yeah. That's the thing. You just, you just led that on nicely to... Do we have to play the, the deck we're dealt? You know, are we stuck with the cards in front of us or can we bluff our way through to win the game. You know, what is the game? The game of life. You know, it is, we're at the table, we're playing, how long do we get to stay and what do we take away in terms of winnings? Yeah, I, I think you know. uh, having played uh, cards with friends and seeing how the cards get played out, quite often you're kind of going, God, if I leave this to chance, I'm not, not going to achieve anything. And that's where you then start to come up with strategies of how you can actually win. And, and I've won certain rounds not necessarily won the complete game but I've run certain rounds now then just... you're going there's two things there now yeah. we've got counting the deck and taking chances yeah you're going taking chances is like you've got to you know, keep the one and the four and hopefully the universe or the deck will deal you the cards you need you're going to go for the middle run you're going to go to you know what the odds are basically if you can count the cards you know that your odds are hard it's hard to get that win yeah but if you get it you win large but it's in other words if, if we're in, in life going take a chance you know play with the cards you're well, dealt I think, yeah that, that try and feel a better hand yeah that, and the, the key thing was to experiment to try things out and see what would happen and the great thing about what we were doing was that it, it wasn't for big stakes so you could actually play around and see what's and i think that's key is as, as long as you can keep the risk minimal low no, then you can I start wonder. to explore that's, things. Well, yes that's uh, well that's again that's a weird one in the sense of if there's a time limit and talking about time yeah. earlier in the sense of on the game and there's only so long you can play and that's the you know time we have in life then we yeah. can't be playing our ha- cards close to our chest all the time you know we'll then we know what we're going to get we're going to take little baby steps and we're going to get a little something and maybe a bit better off or we can lose it all but if we don't actually take a couple of risks or that gamble be it you know you're counting yeah, the cards but i think i think you're, the risks, you're, you're aware of everyone else's hand yeah i think the risks are calculated risks and the more you become confident in what's going on and what the expectations are don't risk everything yes. exactly so you need to so you need to be strategic in the way that you're doing things so that and the other thing is that if if you if you are uh if you do end up losing then it's it seemed to be important in in that game not to demonstrate that you how much that hit seems to have affected you now and that then, becomes it, very important exactly. as well. <laughs> we're playing multiple games yeah you know, well again it's, it's like, we don't want to get too caught up with the concept of playing poker and gambling, know. but we're just saying you know it's it, there, it's, there we can play as many games as we like it's once we don't risk all or lose all and even if you do many a person out there has lost everything yeah, yeah. but on, only for that moment in time and then go okay start playing again do you start do you get back at the table do you play the next game do you play more calculated do you try a few more take a few more chances in life and that's what we're saying now we're talking about the deck of 
cards and going 52 cards in the deck now it might be 54 and two jokers but we're trying to turn on its head and go there's, there's 52 jokers we're all well, the jokers well, what's coming we're to, choosing what's coming to my to mind a, is that is that when I, when you do try to do things um, you te I test things out and then what came to mind you was you run the numbers so you run through a sequence of numbers to see whether or not what you're doing is viable or not viable and then depending on on you know how you see the viability of what you're about to do that that indicates whether you should play and i'm talking about the life game not the poker game and i think that then becomes more important yeah. because you can you know it's about building confidence and and sort of not being frightened not being fearful to actually try things out and i one of the problems that we've got in our society today is that we we live in a world that is um it's a it's almost like a blame culture so people are very frightened that if they do something wrong they'll get blamed and they'll get sunk and what they then do is they then stay within the silos that they've actually created for themselves that you've talked about in the past mm. and they've not reached out yeah. and seen no, how hard have. they could actually achieve things that's but there's an interesting thing you're talking about going it's it's we're con more concerned about what others think than what we think about ourselves and we're measuring ourselves based on what others think as opposed to whether we enjoy it yeah. ourselves so that's back to the joker concept again we're going we want to play this game of life under our own rules not beholden to anyone else and actually go and be what we want to be and if that doesn't work be something else so therefore adopt this joker you know chameleon sort of persona and go on a journey of life and learn and learn from the next minute or the next day and you, you, you pivot onto something else based on you learn something new that informs you that this could be better for you my my my, my, my daughter hannah now is going to be doing her leaving start of the year and she has to fill in her you know application for university now uh, no actual knowledge of what it is she wants yeah and we're, yeah. Going, we're having arguments over you could do this or the other and she said but, but i have to choose now and i go but like she said you don't have to choose now just choose something to get on that journey and when you, you can then make a choice later on that that's not for you choose something else but sometimes we make that when we make that decision we get stuck in it i well, became I think an that's because 25 the system, years ago yeah i think the problem is that the system i couldn't get out the, of it the, yeah, the system is actually trying to force people to make decisions sooner than they really should be uh because they haven't actually found out who they are and what they're about and they're normally being tailored or pressured by people that are in more authority than they are at that particular point in time and they haven't found their wings they haven't found who they are and what's interesting is if you start to look at people who tend to rebel at that sort of stage and say i'll do my own thing they're the ones that actually become the ceos of these big companies because they've not accepted the status quo that they found themselves working within they've rebelled and gone against it yeah, what's jumped into my mind there was is uh, like I'm a liquid and see. Well, I thought I was a liquid and see. Try it and try something else. No, I want to be that. I didn't. I was in my fear, in my box. Wouldn't try something new for the fear of failure. Didn't want to invest time in it because I may not be repaid with something at the end of it. So therefore, it didn't start. Now, 30 years later, you're going, if you could do it all again, would you have started earlier? Yes, I would. If I knew now, what, what I should say, if I know then what I know now, would I do it differently? Yes, I would. I wouldn't go to college. I'd go to the College of Life. I would learn by doing, not learn by rota or learn by, by, uh, by, by book. I'd learn by experience. I, if one experience didn't work, I'd try another. Yeah. But again, it's all very well saying that in hindsight. I, you know, I think, I mean, though, the, 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 you could have actually gone and done all of those things and still ended up where you are now. That That's... I wonder. Well, I wonder actually, statistics, no, numbers. That, 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 I think, is something that's quite interesting. I wouldn't have. The weird thing is, I'm going, and now I wonder if predestination was, no matter what you would have done, you would have ended up where you are now. Or when I think of how I ended up where I am now, you could, you could have wrote a book about it. You couldn't. I had to be unemployed. I had to be, I had to have fired myself in a recession. I, you know, I had, the weird thing is, to, to have met the people I met going on those different journeys those paths had to be followed and then pivoted from yeah. to end up exactly where i am now now maybe i would have ended up with a different now which could have been well off or less well off i could have been a captain of industry had i done something different i've been more engaged but i but strangely enough i think i'm exactly where i need to be for now yes, yeah. and i'm looking forward to it but the the numbers and statistics that would you know and permutations combinations that 
are we where are we exactly where are, are we where we're meant to be at any point in time and well if we become self-aware of this and am aware of where we want to be can we then accelerate that journey to the end game of you know what we want and get it sooner if that yeah it, it does i mean i, I mean what, what's interesting is that i i i kind of don't my own journey was that um, I should have worked in a in a football boot factory. I should have worked for the BBC, as in the Beaujolais Boot Company, which was just down the road from where I went to school. And most of our uh, teachers or, or uh, careers advisors were pushing us towards that because it was a nice, safe job. Um, but the interesting thing is that 15 years afterwards, that, that company went bust because they moved everything to the Far East somewhere. Uh, and I'm still working away, doing something. I, I'm still doing what I set out to do, which was to to work in either film, television, or something that's media related. And and as uh, things have changed, uh, ups and downs in the economy, I've adapted to whatever I needed and found myself in different areas. So I've gone from being uh, an assistant editor to to an editor to directing stuff to teaching people mm. and all the way along those journeys now, are quite interesting, interesting you know? but I suppose when we're if we went back in time yeah. and thought about you know I want to get into film would we have we all picture ourselves as being the captain well I don't know if everyone does picture themselves as being I just want to be the editor or I just want to be the accountant working into someone else did I think or daydream or aspire at the very beginning that I'm just going to go in, and they're going to promote me to the top without the effort. I'm going to be number one, top of the game no, I think, I in think the back industry. Then, back then, or were you, yeah. I was more. I wasn't realistic. You were probably realistic. I was a dreamer. No, what, what, I expected well, it to I, happen I was, without going through the learning. Yeah. Well, I, I definitely was a dreamer, but I knew that I had to go on a journey, uh, and that it, the doors wouldn't open in certain areas straight away. It was just trying to find which would be the best way to go. Uh, and having sought advice from various different people. But if you knew you could kick the, you could, yeah. But if you knew you could have kicked the door down earlier, would you have? It's like my problem was I stayed in jobs too long. It's you know after a year, if you were going to go up, the only way up was out if you hadn't already moved up. Yeah. And I sort of stayed. It's going two, three years in and go nothing. Okay, you were comfortable. It was just you were letting this comfort zone build around you, which was a resistance to actually move and change based on it being okay. But it wasn't brilliant. It wasn't your dream. It wasn't your dream job. It was a job. It paid the bills. You're going. It, yeah. You, could, you, yeah. you you're, Well, in my case, I was paid well, but not not. Well enough, but not. It was no. It was no Mark Zuckerberg in there. There was yeah. no. It was never going to be much different. It was going to be. If someone died, you moved up. If, or they. Or, or if you'd want to move up, then move out. But I mean. Well, I, I think from, from it was a, just a job. Well, a lot of the perspectives we were looking at was was we, we. My wife and I wanted to have children, so we had children, so we had the family thing. But we knew if we started that section early we could actually get to a point where we'd still be young enough that we could carry on doing things that interested us. Mm -hmm. And I think we've we've now reached that point uh, and, and we're now starting to do the things that we want to do. And I, I do think the doors are still there. They're still open. They, they are opening more now than they ever did before because I'm not so frightened of pushing the doors open as I may have been as a younger person. Mm -hmm. Um, well, then you're there, back is a, there wonder, is a different system. There was a different system 30 yeah. years ago to what we have now. Mm -hmm. uh, 30 years ago, you, you, if you wanted to achieve something, you had to follow a certain route. Nowadays, the youngsters are being told you, you, you don't have to wait, you can get straight into it. And, and it, it, it's not the same philosophy that we would have had. When it's we, unrealistic expectations. It is, absolutely, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it is. There have been told two different stories. Yeah, yeah I know. They expect to go in from college and just suddenly appear. And, well, actually, I am them 30 years ago. I, I was unrealistic in my expectations all the time of basically, if I do this, I'll just get a job. It'd be brilliant. They'll promote me. I don't have to earn it. I just, it just happened. I'm expecting the universe yeah. just to give it to me without actually earning it. Now, again, there's other ones going, other people go out there and they earn it, but aren't given it. So yes. they've gone through and put in the time, put in the effort, and then they're going, funny enough, the system says, geez, you're the best person with a job. The last person we want to move is you. So actually, we'll promote your mate to defect all and leave you there because you're yeah. the expert in what you do and hard to replace. So you, you build you in your own... You become a victim of your own success then. Of your, <laughs> success, 
or lack of success, depending on no, who's perceiving because it. You're, because but, you're uh, successful in that particular role, you then become the victim of that because you're so yeah. successful in that role that you can't be moved up and they don't want to lose you. So I've, I've seen that as well. But I think, I mean, but the exciting thing is that if you, we were talking about positive attitude, positive, you know, being positive or being negative or having a positive attitude. I think we're aware of what the negative, the positive and the negatives are. So as long as you can then sort of add the numbers up for that, you can then start to see what mm. is a way to go forward and, and then start to test things out. I mean, we're, we're starting well, to, ex to explore the idea of marketing, what we're doing. We've, I, I mean, I feel as though I've learned my craft. You're learning your craft with me and we're learning on, on the journey together because it's better to collaborate than go on your own because then you can test ideas out and support one another, especially emotionally during that sort of stage to get to, to get going forward. But I think now... Is one it, is a very lonely number. That's absolutely. it. Absolutely. Really. Two, is, two yeah. is better. Yeah. Three is yeah. even... We're going, we're going on a journey from one to two to three. Well, we've to got a 52, few to, haven't from we? From a couple to few. 52 to get. <laughs> well, we want 52. Yeah. We, we, we want the full deck. Yeah. That's the whole point. We want to stack the... Actually, we want to stack the deck. We want 52 jokers and no, and no normal player cards because yeah. a lot of player yeah. cards are... They're going to be stuck in that role, in that... That, that number, that level, and we're going as a perception. We're going. We want people to be of a growth mindset. That isn't. They're not a fixed mindset. They go. I am not a number. I yeah. never was a number. Actually, if I was a number, what number would it be? Actually, I think it's forty-two because I like Douglas Adams. <laughs> I am the meaning of life because without being forty-two, I don't exist. But I think what's interesting is that if if we look at what's happening with the, the current sort of situation that's that's both affecting the world from the pandemic and from the economy, there are great opportunities about to start to happen because every time this this always happens, it, it, it it's part of the planet Earth that they will have these epidemics throughout history that these seem to have occurred. So, so and at the end of each one of them, when the world changes, it and it changes quite dramatically. And there are this is a time for reflecting on on how to move things forward and to do the things that you enjoy doing and, and, and want to do because you, you can't get out there, you can't go to work, you can't go out there and do some Actually, things. A terminology. Yeah. Exactly. Term, sorry, but the terminology we were using, I think, earlier on, like, again, was, you know, everyone's talking about when normality returns. I go, what is normal? No, it's everyone's no sense normal. of what yeah. their normal is. There is no normal. It's abnormal to be normal. Now, if yeah, nothing else, yeah. they're going... I'm using a term going, well, I think, I don't know, I could be picking up from someone else or the news or God knows what I'm going, when the new norm yes. comes in. What, what, what will the new norm look like? If you think about that from, like? from, from a, yeah, but if you think about that from a perspective, I worked for the BBC and I worked for Anglia Television, I worked for Southern Regional College, and then I've worked independently with smaller companies. You've worked for big organisations as well. When you go into each of those organisations, they have their own normality, that is not the same and when you leave those normalities and you go in as a visitor you suddenly kind of go oh my god i was part of that what what was i thinking because this is actually quite wild and it's quite crazy but when you become part of the system you you actually start to <laughs> yeah. accept that system because you're now influenced now, by that's that it. System. when you go in do you dress up in their normality and put on that suit and blend into the deck. Whereas I know anywhere I've walked in, what walked in the door was abnormality. And when I went in there, I put ripples through the place that they said couldn't get ri ri nearly rid of me quick enough because I was, un I was un unsettling yeah. to the level yeah. of normality that was in there. This comfort well, zone my, my was starting wife, to get uncomfortable. My wife says that I'm, I'm not an easy person to manage. So I would be doing the same, although I don't seem to be, you know, maybe as wild as you are, Gavin. Oh, we're not, we're I, not yes men. We're not yes men. No, <laughs> no. And we basically challenge. We're, we're, yeah, we're like, a massive challenge to the organisations because we, what we, we're the we see we're, ways of doing things. We're, yeah, the, we're the elephant in the room. In the room. You know, yeah. actually, we're actually, the, exactly. And I want to be, I want to be, I was going to bring in another animal. What's that one that's in the China shop? Yeah. The, the right is not a rhino. Is it, is it no, a rhino? Bull. China shop? The bull in. Again, bull. it's, a bull. It's a bull. Well, actually, a bull I, I prefer China a shop. rhino. I, I want to be a rhino yeah. in the China shop. The bull is only half a half a bull. You know, be a rhino. And you yeah, know that well, ones. you're going to bring in change, <laughs> disruption. It's yeah. going to be, it's not going to be the same ever again. Actually, an area I worked in was meant to be actually, transformation. Uh, if we think what about that, yeah. Deliver in is change. 
Well, the, yes, and normally that the change is a perceived disruption because the people are so stuck in their way of doing things that they think is normality. But what we are normally doing is is seeing things from afresh and can see how we can make things better. Mm -hmm. So the change that we're often proposing isn't a bad thing. It's usually something that will actually make people's lives a lot better. But the resistance comes because the people resistance. don't like change. That's it. Now, there is a weird thing. I love it. You just went, I'm thinking Star Trek. Resistance is futile. It's futile, yeah. Change is inevitable. Embrace change. That's what everything says. Transformation. We have to Absolutely. transform. We have to, in terms of our joker, we have to met metamorphically transform to innovate, to move forward. Actually, what's going on out there at the moment is we've got to invent a fix for the pandemic. We've got to instigate change and in how everyone does stuff and how they did it before and what the new what the new norm looks like means adopt new ways of doing things well what worked before won't work in the future and if you want to be a leader in the future you whoever embraces change and, and implements it quickest are the winners that's the game. The game of businesses that have transformed overnight to be remote working. They're going to reduce their costs. They're going to survive longer. They're going to they're going to be there to make the difference, to 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 implement new changes and be part of tomorrow. Versus others won't exist. They'd be gone. They couldn't move fast enough. They and I think one of, the, one, of, one of the biggest problems is that what people forget, because because they get so cocooned in a sort of system that gives them an environment that seems to be the same all year round, they forget that there are actually four seasons in the year and there's massive changes that are going on. And there are, in life, there are different seasons to life of where things, you get to do certain things. And, and that's where the patience, I think, comes in. Because if you... Early on in life, if you you may know what you want to do, but the things may not unravel to allow you to do stuff. But as if you keep persisting in what you were trying to do, then, as you said, the universe or or in my case, God will actually open up the doors, and you will get a chance because you are you've, you're sticking, you're being consistent, you know what you want to try and do, and the season will come about where you get a chance to show your capabilities. No, I, I don't. No, I don't. There's a weird thing there. I'm saying an awful lot of people never get the chance to show their capabilities. The problem is they didn't step up, and the gap is closed. It's, it's, yes. You can't. You can't wait for the universe to let. We, we can ask for the universe. We believe in the secret. If you ask no, the universe, it will provide. That, no, no let, let, let's put that into context. But you have to I, step I'm not up saying and, that. Yes, oh. I think you're given options and you have to do, you have to make, you have to take the first step. I mean, a lot of things that I found Actually, in the past, look, that's what they say about good luck. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, good well, luck. Because it was one of the sayings over there was it's wrapped up in hard work. Yes. It's, people are not lucky. They, they spot an opportunity. It was in front of them. They acted on it. They worked for it. And, you know, literally yes. to everyone else after the fact, they were lucky individuals. No, they, they, they know, they, they recognise the opportunity and they made I, it happen. I mean, going back to that, what, that, that kind of concept, it, it, I, I think you're given opportunities. It's just whether or not you can recognise that that opportunity is there. And actually then you need, but you need to be the person that they see it. They say a leap in faith. And I, I know there's been a number of occasions in life where I've kind of gone blindly. I now need to make a, an, a take an action and I need to take an action now. And it's either this one or it's that one. And I actually want to go that way. So I'm going to take that way. And w then what happens, which you've experienced because you've talked about it as well, is that you're made to feel as though you've made the biggest mistake of your life to try and get you to take the other route. But if you can stick through that and, and carry on going through that negative, force your way through that negative, you suddenly find that actually that was the right route because that was the fear. You, had to you, make, were, you had to make that decision yourself. You were stepping through the fear because the, the strength of that fear and perception of without knowing the facts and what the leap of faith you're saying is it's, it's stepping through the fear and coming out the other side. And even no matter how bad it was the other side, it wasn't that you were going to die and it wasn't a physical leap. You were going over, over a like a chasm. But in your mind, it was, I'm giving up security. I'm changing everything that I know or am or a good part of me or my family or God knows what. I'm, I'm going into somewhere. I'm not the expert and it's all new and therefore 
unknown and therefore leap of faith and fear they're very in my opinion to go through the fear and, and, and negate it is is always a leap of faith because we're in this we we'll go back to the previous podcast if you're in the now and the fear of the unknown the only way out of the unknown out of the unknown into a new known is to step through the fear with a leap of faith yeah and I think the Does other thing sense? is, as, as long as you can, we were talking about numbers and they say that you've got a, a certain number of heartbeats. And as long as your heart's beating and as long as you're breathing, you can actually take actions in some form or fashion until the curtain comes down at the end. And then that's the moment you can't. But until that point comes, you can you can keep changing. You can keep changing the direction to try and achieve the goals that you want to try and achieve uh, and, and make sure the cards. Yeah. I say you own the deck. You own the whole deck. Shuffle the cards and deal a new hand. Play the next game. Don't like it? Stack it, pack it, rack it. Shuffle them again and play the game. The game of life. Don't give up. Don't get the 52 card pick up and get it and chuck it in the air and go, I'm enough, I've enough of this game of life. I'm out of here. No, play a different game. Yeah. You know, well, play, it's, play it's, the next it's always card. About and I think, again, it's back to this idea that if you keep testing, 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 which is, <laughs> you, you will find, and it, but you've got to learn from that process. If, and if that first process doesn't work, well, what do you need if you go through that kind of reflective practice? Now, I like it. What popped into my mind is, in one, one caveat is, make sure it's not a game of solitaire. Yeah. There has yeah. to be no, someone no. else at the table. Yeah. Or something else at the table. And not with a machine. The, 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 Don't be playing poker on yeah, no, no, no. machines. The, the, the whole point of the <laughs> of life is that you, if you share your journey in life, then you then you've got something to remember. Yeah. Well that's that's actually quite interesting because actually I was looking about how long we were at and our time is up now. And it is our number is up. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and click on the bell for notifications.